Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, and in this video... <laughs> well, I'm sure many of you guys already know what I'm going to be talking about since if you've already seen the thumbnail and if you've been following the graphics hardware rumors and news lately, then you'll probably get a good idea of what I'm about to talk about. AMD held a press conference at Computex today, and man, did they come out swinging. But I'll get to that later. AMD started off their presentation talking about their goals for the future. They wanted to introduce a new graphics architecture to the market, their plans with their partnerships, and how they can deliver great experiences plus products to consumers, and finally, their 7th gen APUs, Bristol Ridge. I won't be covering those last few topics since I mainly want to focus on that nice, hot, and juicy GPU news. <laughs> I don't know man, but I'll probably do another video or something about those later. Alright, so moving on to the GPU news, AMD's Senior v uh, Vice President, Chief Architect of AMD Radeon Technologies Group, Raja Kaduri, mentioned a whole bunch of goals that they had for the graphics market. One of their major targets, and I've mentioned this many times before, is to bring the VR experience to the mainstream, or to everyone. Raja Kaduri mentioned that their inspiration came from one of Palmer Lucky's tweets, about how VR is something that in the future everyone will want. So I can see a lot of truth to that. I mean, with this previous year and the beginning of 2016, all we kept on seeing was hype on these VR headsets. You've got the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, and then you've got like all these other companies trying to hop on the bandwagon of virtual reality. Developers and marketers are really pushing this towards the consumer because they believe that's what the future is going to be about. But what was the problem before? Why did he say that tens of millions can only read about the amazing VR experiences, but not actually experience it for themselves? Well that's simple. It was too damn expensive. So even have an enjoyable and smooth experience with the headset like the HTC Vive or uh, Oculus Rift, you needed a computer with an i5 or equivalent, along with the minimum GPU requirements which were the GTX 970 or R9 290 or uh, 390. So those cards would retail for around 320-ish to $350, not something everyone can afford. Especially the, one, the ones only in the mainstream segment, which by the way, includes a lot of people. One of the other goals he mentioned was to make every gamer into a passionate PC gamer by unveiling this new GPU which will disrupt the market. And the last but not least, um, with this new Polaris architecture, one of their other main focuses was to bring an efficient GPU. So how were they going to achieve all this? Well, with none other than their new RX 480 based on their newly designed and engineered Polaris architecture and priced at just $200 US. So all these rumors that we were hearing about how AMD is going to offer an amazing price to performance ratio pretty much came true. I'm pretty happy with this unveiling because Polaris turned out to be what I had hoped for and what I had expected it to be. A GPU which will offer performance around a GTX 980 or R9 Fury at a killer price point. So as you guys can see from the slide, the specifications slide, the, R9, the RX 480, sorry, so used to saying R9. So, but anyways, RX 480 has a little less than 5 teraflops, 36 compute units, a memory bandwidth of 256, a uh, memory size of 4 or 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, so it's going to come in two variants, 4 or 8 gigabytes. And I believe the 4 gigabyte model will be priced at um, uh, $200 US, and then the more exp uh, higher 8 gigabyte version will be priced at $249, which explains... Well, sorry, I'm, I'll scratch that, I'm going to spoil something for later part. But anyways, um, it have, it'll have a memory uh, bit, rate, bit rate of 256. Uh, power consumption rate of 150 watts. It will support VR Premium, AMD FreeSync, and it will have DisplayPort 1.3 and 1.4 HDR. So Roger Kaduri explained that this card is built on the new 14 nanometer fin FinFET process and was further optimized by AMD to achieve 2.8 times the performance per, per watt. They also mentioned that how with the Vulkan API, it will allow this $200 card to run Doom at amazingly high frame rates. No real, new, no real world performance was shown, just something they claimed to do. So we'll have to wait for benchmarks in regards to that.
Now here's where I thought things started to get really interesting. He compares this card to a $700 GPU solution and asks what else can you do with it. Showing off, an, showing off an Ashes of the Singularity DirectX 12 benchmark, they compare a dual crossfire configuration of the 480s to the recently released GTX 1080, a high-end graphics card targeted at the enthusiasts. The graph illustrated the average frame rate achieved from both of these setups, and the 480s outperformed the 1080 and cost below $500, while as we all know, the GTX 1080 costs $700. Now I know that Crossfire isn't something that everyone likes to do and creates issues for people such as uh, problems with heat output and power consumptions. But with this die shrink, those problems are now eliminated. There's no need for you to go out and buy an 850 watt, po watt power supply and look into extreme cooling solutions since these cards are just so much more efficient. And we have the 14 nanometer process to thank for that. But what about Crossfire scaling issues and support? Well, unfortunately, like, that is a gray area that I'm going, ha going to have to say, wait uh, for benchmarks. Wait until the NDA or non-disclosure agreement has been lifted from AMD. Then we'll truly get to see whether or not they have done something to um, help facilitate this dual GPU configuration. And if enthusiasts won't have a headache with all these issues that are known with these multi-GPU setups. I can't tell you how many threads and stuff I see online where people are complaining about crossfire scaling issues, um, pro profiles not being released or supported, things like that. So in the graph, another very intriguing thing that they mentioned was that the game itself does not utilize GPUs fully since the f since from the game developer side. So Roger Kaduri implies that if game devs optimize, you can probably see much better performance. Again, I don't know about that one entirely. Short answer for that would be to just simply win for benchmarks. So apart from all that, that was pretty much all they had shown in regards to the new RX 480. I would have liked to see more games shown and also if AMD had done anything about their card's performance on DirectX 11 titles. Um, also would have liked to see some sort of t statistics shown running in the background which would tell us about the core clock and memory clock speeds. That was something that I was really interested in seeing, but I guess I'll have to wait for that. So, um, like I said earlier, this information is still to come in the next few weeks. So don't get extremely hyped up since we haven't seen the whole picture yet. But I know after seeing that, it's, it's, hard, to, it's, it's hard not to get hyped. So what about me personally? What am I going to do once the 4 RX 480 hits the store, sh uh, store shelves? Well, I'm probably not going to buy it. And the only reason for that is because I'm going to wait for the new Vega GPUs, which are going to target the high-end market. Hopefully to be at least shown in the fourth quarter of 2016. I'm not saying that the 480 is a bad card. No, no, no. I was quite impressed, actually. As of right now, though, I'm pretty satisfied with the performance of the 390. And upgrading to obtain the performance of a single 480 wouldn't justify it enough for me to try and sell the old card. The for performance of a single RX 480 will probably be along the, uh, the lines of a GTX 980 and an R9, air, uh, R9 Fury air-cooled. But after seeing the RX 480, I'm actually even more amped about what AMD has in store for us with their new Vega line of GPUs. Seeing what the RX 480 turned out to be, I'll take that as a good indication about how great Vega will be. It's just a personal preference thing with me, where when I upgrade, I'm actually looking for massive improvements over the older hardware that I was using. So that's why I have my eyes set towards Vega 11 specifically. Oh, and if you're someone that is dead set on buying the, R uh, the new RX 480 once it's launched, then you're going to have to camp on e-tailer websites such as Amazon, Newegg and NCIX because I know for a fact that it's going to be sold out extremely fast. You're literally going to have to sit there pressing F5 or the refre refresh button like every two seconds. If you guys didn't know, the GTX 1080 sold out extremely quickly. And I'd expect the same to happen with the 480, especially since its target market is quite considerably bigger than the high end. So a lot of people want their hands on this card. Well guys, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about the RX 480 Polaris GPU unveiling. 
Leave a like if you guys found this video informative and interesting. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Are you going to be getting a 480? Are you guys going to be crossfiring them? Or are you guys going to be taking the same route I am and waiting for Vega? I'll look forward to seeing your responses. And also, if you want to see more content like this in the future, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks guys, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.